everybody. Thanks for joining me again today. So we have another video with Jennifer and myself. Um, we are really enjoying these conversations. I hope you guys are enjoying them. It seems like you are. And we love your commentary as well. So, you know, it's just really fun to channel in a conversation with someone else because what we do, and I used to, you know, I do this with Celeste too when we actually work together, is we play off of each other. We'll get information, the other will get information, and then it builds out a bigger story. So it's kind of cool to do it with another person, which is why we're continuing to do this. And there's always a, a plethora of information that we can dig into, as you have noticed. So I hope you enjoy our video today. So just a quick overview of what we're going to cover. We are very focused in this video on continuing the energy conversation. But what we're doing is we're focused on who we truly are as an energy being, as an energy body, changing the paradigm of, oh, we're a human, we have a body. No, we're an energy being that has entered into a body to then live in our fullest and create out of that. But it, it's a whole flipping of the way you think about your day-to-day -day and your existence and who you are. And that's what we're talking about. Now, you, we've talked about some of that in the past, but now we're getting into some other areas. And I think it becomes very, um, I guess I'll just say, very robust in the sense of who we are meant to be, who we are, how we're meant to live. And what I was getting as I was doing the editing of, of this um conversation is we actually in ancient days we knew we were energy bodies we lived that way okay so we we uh, would uh, care for our energy bodies we would learn how to care for ourselves in a way that that um, we identified as energy beings first and foremost we have never been taught any of that think about think about growing up okay we yeah, okay, we have health class, right? <laughs> I don't know if they have health class now, but you kind of learn how to take care of yourself. Well, not really, I mean, kind of. Uh, your emotional self, no, at least back in my day, um, and I don't know if they do it now, but hopefully there's some of that, but being able to take care of your emotional self, being able to understand your feelings, your emotions, the expressions of that, your emotional and your physical self, but then there's the energy self, which there's nothing out there on that. I highly doubt nowadays they're talking about that at all in the school system, right? So we have long lost that whole idea that we are an energy being. And so what we're doing today is we're talking about flipping that back around because that's where we draw our power from when we start understanding that and then being able to care for ourselves in ways that will assist our energy body in being all we came to be and more. So that's kind of a quick summary. Let's see, I've got some notes here. Um, so if you think about the energy body, like I said, we're looking at changing the paradigm, um, seeing ourself as an energy being first and foremost. We're talking also the birthing process of how humans are born and what actually happens and that energetic part of that and particular to our ancestral lineage and information that shows up. We're also gonna to touch on the Akashic Records. Now remember, this all ties to us being energy beings. So we're gonna talk about the Akashic Records. We're also gonna bring in um, Jesus or Yeshua. Um, he was a master of his energy body. We're gonna talk about that. I got some channeled information on that, which is really interesting. We're also gonna touch on energy blocks. So remember, all of what we discuss has to do with looking at ourselves uh, in a very different way, as an energy being first and foremost, versus this human being that we are, and then expanding that out so that we can be ever more creative and expansive in this lifetime. So. I hope that's helpful to you. For those of you who are new to my channel, thank you so much for joining me, and I so hope you enjoy the videos on this channel. I'm Carolyn Zeiser. I'm a channel, I'm a distance energy healer, and I'm a spiritual awakening mentor. And I offer these channeled conversations and oftentimes the energy updates and channeled messages from the Lightkeepers to help you through 
your life journey, your ascension journey, your awakening journey. So thank you so much for joining me today. Also, if you want more free content, if you look in the description box below, you're going to see a link that will take you to um, a video on flow. It'll actually help you understand how to create more flow in your body for health and wellness. And then what it does is it takes you over to joining my email list. And what that is is just a weekly um, channel that comes from the Light Keepers to support you in the week forward. It's a poem. They're always beautiful. I hope you'll join me there too and you'll get more free content that way. So before we get started, I just want to make a comment on <laughs> the last couple of weeks, particularly since the lunar eclipse and the full moon, which we had I don't even know now. What was it? Four days ago, I guess. So this is Thursday the 19th that I'm actually um, videoing this on. But I'm going to tell you right now, this was a, a powerful, powerful event that is designed to launch us. And I bet some of you felt it because I sure did. Designed to launch us into the man manifestation of the timeline we were, oh, okay, I have chills. <laughs> Meant to live, okay? So we have been living up until now. We know something different's coming, right? We know something. We feel it. We feel a new manifestation. We feel a new idea. We feel it. We might not even be able to identify it. Well, guess what? This is where the, the train tracks um, separate, all right? We've been going down this one train track, and now what we're doing is we're, we're picking a new timeline for our journey forward. And, okay, I just got... We just got kicked this last weekend, okay? We really got kicked. Oh, they okay, they're showing like kicked out of the nest, kicked out of the to follow this new pathway forward. So for for many of us, what this is doing is this is this is starting to rev up a new idea, a new uh, uh, path forward. It may be something little, but it may spark into something larger. My point in this is something shifting and changing. We are shifting and changing. Many things may be shifting and changing in your journey, but you might not know what it looks like until down the road. Because remember, manifestation takes time, okay? So down the road a piece, six months, a year, just know this is a big moment for this to start happening. So really taking care of yourself, listening to your intuition, listening to your inspiration and your passion. And just know that some of you right now probably know that some of this is cracking open to lead you in a new direction. It doesn't mean you have to define it and know it and create a project plan around it. You don't have to know the end goal. Just follow the thread of the thing. Do your self-care. Do your work. But all I have to say is these this last week I have felt tremendous fatigue. I also, um, there was a lot of emotion coming up, but the fatigue was overwhelming. And it's literally like it has lasted a week for me. So I really got kicked during the eclipse um, and the full moon this last week. But what I'm here to tell you, they keep showing, when I'm talking to you, they keep showing a bird being out of the nest and flying. That's, that's kind of the idea. This is, it was an energetic boost for us to then move down that new timeline, the timeline we're meant to live, okay, that we are meant to live. So anyway, I hope that helps you a little bit, kind of get a sense of where we're at with things. Um, I will, if you can believe it, in another week or two, be coming up with the June energy update. So I hope you enjoy, in the meantime, the conversation Jennifer and I are having. Again, we love your comments. Feel free to leave any notes and I will get to those as I can. So I appreciate you being here and I'll touch base with you after the conversation. All right. Now, when you get pulled into an environment where you have to kind of deal with things that maybe you would you not necessarily involved yourself in for a while, like, you know, like the thing, you know, going to the hospital and being there with, this, you know what I'm saying? And being around in the environment of all of that. Totally. Do you find it really does something strange to your energetic? In fact, it's, it's, it's because part of this is, you know, we've ended up kind of isolating ourselves or narrowing down what we expose ourselves to. And then when we get thrown back into it, it's, it is truly to your point, an energetic shock to the system. I mean, it is. And you know how funny it is because you see, you know, they make movies about this and stuff about like stepping into a different dimension and being like, what is happening? I'm in this weird place or I switch places and you know, all these movies about just being in this bizarre kind of trying to figure out what's going on. Things are different here. I can't figure out what's going on. Mm -hmm. Well, I find myself doing that now when I go back into a highly 3D or traditional environment, I feel like that's the weird 
place like the twilight zone, I'm stepping into that's the twilight zone and not like where I am, where most people think where I am is feel, feel, you know, it's the other way it switched for me. So I go into heavily standardized or structured here. I feel like I've just stepped into the twilight zone, right? Yeah, totally. Totally. That's exactly how I feel too. We are acclimating now to that idea of where we won't have that big bump up against it and like, oh God, it, it'll be, it will be so used to living in that higher space that when we do come into the human experience, it's, we're going to be able to maintain the higher, um, I'll just say energetic um, body or the vibration without having to feel like you just um, got dropped from, you know, the 12th floor of the building in the elevator. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yes. And that, so, so it's, yeah. So we're in this weird place. A lot of us are in this weird place per what you just said is what I'm getting of, of finding that, that, you know what, you know how they do the, I always do the figure eight thing, right? They show me that finding that point right in there that just is perfect. Right. They're they're using the word right now. Coalescence. There you go. Coalescence. Yeah. Yeah. You know, every time I get on here, I feel like I've, I have, there's just so much that is going on that I, I don't even know where to begin. And I try I to find a little, like, what can I tell you that would kind of, sem- it has been so incredible. I have taken the kind of this detour into a lot of like genetics and family lineage and how that plays into the galactic and cosmic and your whole thing, genetics and like all of this stuff and there. It's so vast. Oh, let's oh talk God. about it. That'd be, that's really exciting. Cause they've given me some information when, you know, they talk about DNA and cellular memory a lot and how that works with past lives and all that. But I would love to talk about that if you want to, oh, I mean, yeah. whether I mean, this turns into a video or not, I don't know, but I mean, I'd love to chat. Well, about you know, as, as far as like all of the different things that I'm tapped into, like on different levels, it, no matter what subject matter that seems to be like highlighted within me or kind of, I'm so it always connects into all of it. So now it's almost like I'm seeing how genetics, your um, lineage, your family lineage, your, your, how it connects into all the stuff we've been talking about all along. It's still, it's all connected in pieces are connected. And, you know, we, I didn't realize just how much of a walking library we are of everything our entire ancestral line there yeah. is nothing yeah there's nothing that is in our line that isn't complete within you exactly and you know they've you always told yep. all the yeah. way yeah you're, you're getting the same information that i've received i in, in more limited way i think you're, we're going to have a more expansive conversation here but they've talked so much that it's basically we have we have the library of us it, within us through our dna and yes, uh, yes. And, and it's, it's, I mean, and here's the other part of that on another note is it's there to be able to be accessed. It's our own library. It's, it's essentially it's for us. Yes. Yeah. It's for us to access um, so that we can do the work that we're going to do through consciousness. That's why we have so many of our guides tend to be family, right? Yeah. Family members. Mm-hmm. We house in us the entire library of all of it. So grandma shows up, aunt so-and-so shows up, whatever. They're complete within us. So as we're here doing this, there's nothing that is not possible through us with any of it, even ones we don't know about, even the future, right? So we literally are our lineage. We carry our lineage in our body. Now we have, um, it's something that's more of kind of a, uh, sacred. The reason I stumbled upon this knowledge is because I was learning that there was attempts to access this information. And this is, okay, so if you think of the significance of your um, umbilical cord, okay, you're born, your umbilical, you come out of the womb, you have the umbilical cord still attached, and there's this last kind of surge into the baby as they take their first breath of something out that's always been attached to mom, right? Yeah. And when you're born, that surge that comes through as a surge, and then they cut, you know, they cut. So there is, you think about what 
might be coming through into your body as you are born through your umbilical cord. Okay. Your navel. Oh, wow. Okay. And it's, and right. think about, think about your navel. That's your solar. I mean, it's really ultimately kind of like your solar plexus area. If you think about it, I mean, that's that area and I'm, I'm getting a lot of light. That, oh, that's so interesting. Um, I'm also getting the traumas and dramas. You yes. talk, when you said ancestral, I got words, traumas, all and dramas. Mm-hmm. All of it. It's all there. Yes. There's nothing missing. Okay. So you think about that comes, that's the, like the last thing before you are detached from mom. That's the last thing that comes through you. That is like, here comes the library. Okay? Yes. Yes. Here comes all of this stuff. I'm here, here you I'm, are, yeah. right? Here comes you, all of you, all your stuff. Here it comes, right? From mom to you. We'll transfer I just heard, from- okay, wait. I just heard the last final push. Like, is that what you're talking about? Like the last, like, and because, you know, out, and, and comes anatomically what happens is that does actually have a surge. What's in that comes through into the baby. Oh, that's one see, of the I, last things that happens. Okay. Okay. So, not having had children, I have no clue. <laughs> yeah, that's why some of these really holistic moms and stuff they'll say, you know, they cut the cord way too soon. They should leave that alone for a minute. Um, uh, you know, they have like different ideas about what's going on there because med- medically they're not necessarily always tuned into what's actually happening there. But there is a transfer that occurs from that placenta. And I don't know if you've ever seen the underside of a umbilical cord like the underside of a placenta lit for like through light it looks like the tree of life oh so it's well, like the almost. tree of life yes and then oh, they, they just said branches the, the yeah. cord's the trunk right so you talk about a family tree and the placenta looks like a tree with it's coming into your navel that's literally what it is a metaphor it's a met- metaphorically but literally what's happening all of that ancestral stuff is in that and it comes into yep. and they, and utilize. Just said, they just said all the branches come with yeah. it too. Okay. So they're showing, this is interesting how they're showing this. They're showing the tree that you mentioned, but they're mm-hmm. showing th- that umbilical cord. That's like the trunk, right? Is that what yes. Kind of, yes. Yeah. And then so like, what? you're kind of like, almost like the roots are coming. Yeah. yeah. Clean, so guess what? Into the, yeah. So they're showing what they're your showing. roots. Yes. Right? They're showing that <laughs> as that, final push happens the tree does this collapse thing the whole tree of life the tree fails you go into you and then you're cut you kind of become from the roots you kind of become now the tree uh-huh. okay yes so this is beautiful it's all all this stuff kind of came together now the weird thing about it is so your navel let me i'll only go back to this point your navel has significance you know that we have a navel chakra we don't talk about it very much but that's a portal okay now in that you think about what just came through that portal and what that houses at your lineage. It's very sacred. It's, yeah. it's like, like nobody touches that. Right. Right. So well, That's I've been going point. through some of these, some of these things, you know, that I do sometimes where something's kind of gone wrong or sideways, my being tends to kind of like go in and fix things, you know, like um, I came into something where I was hearing the word navel being used a lot. And I, you know, had, it took me a minute to ask my team, what are we talking about here? I had to look some stuff up. I'm like, holy moly. And it dawned on me just recently what was going on that, that there was, you know, there's groups that wanted, you know, whatever people, whoever that were accessing. And they said, nobody ever does that. We do never, we never interface with each other and go into somebody's through their navel. That is like sacred. That's their being. That's their lineage. And that, that's not okay. And that was, that was occurring. So they kind of went in there to shut that down. Interesting. So, but I, I didn't know that until now, but it now it makes total sense to me. So that little um, maneuver there could open something up like your lineage, your ch- genealogy, your genes mm. to manipulation. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, that's how I kind of find out, found out about that little, that little navel issue right there and everything that comes through you. Um, oh God, now I kind of lost my spit. My spit. How did we start this? Well, I oh my went- gosh, you, I forgot um, now. you're talking, how do we get, we're talking about final push as the baby's born, all of our library of us shows up or in our ancestral. That's how the whole thing started. Oh yeah. Well, I was telling you that I'm realizing how we carry everything. I know. We, are, we literally are the walking library. 
everything that we're doing well, for ourselves, affecting our ancestors forward and backward, we are carrying it. This is like, you know, this is kind of a, it's kind of a big deal, right? Well, and that, uh, that, that lines up with, because I think this is more expansive even, I mean, I think you know this, but we talk about a lot about the universes inside of us. So yeah. oh, they just said the storehouse. So, mm-hmm. but it make, okay. So to me, this makes so much sense in that all the records would be with us if we are, because remember how we've talked so much about, and they've, they've given us this information that, and, and we've, you've talked about how we have everything we need within us. And yes. we're a self-sustaining, like little battery, like we have everything we need, which includes the knowledge and information and the history and essentially, okay, I'm just going to go out on a limb, like the entirety, and this is a more expansive than just ancestral and see if you think this makes sense, but the records are, the Akashic records are actually all in us for accessing. It's not, okay, so you know how we can sit there and talk about, and I'm not trying to take it somewhere else, but I'm just going to finish this part. No, no. But, okay, but you know how we th- always think about, oh, access the Akashic records, and you always think of it as outside of us, right? Like I'm accessing some other universal. I'm going thing. off to. Yeah, right, and exactly. it's not, it's in us, they're saying. It's actually, right. we're accessing our own information. And so we think we're going to some higher dimensional space out like somewhere that we can't access. Sorry about the jet. Um, no, it's it's through the practices, the self-care practices, the awakening journey, we, we learn to access what's inside of us. So yes. That's right. And so, you know, here we talk about these and just like what you were saying, it's funny as we learn these things, we're always thinking about it, how everything is out there. And then we are, oh, there's an Akashic records. Oh my goodness. And I, I am certain, you know, that I'm kind of making fun of people because this is the steps we go through. I did the same thing. Oh, I'm certified to be able to access your Akashic records for you. Right. Or there's there's an archangel that's in charge of guarding and he only lets certain people through to look at the Akashic. That's all BS. It is BS. In fact, they said to me every single Every yes. single person can access the Akashic Records. There's no one. You just have to. You, it's about. You are that. Right? Yes. You are that. It's yes. not outside of you. It is not like permission to get in. No. Yours is yours. Now, I will say your your, your lineage, your family, your it, it is something that you, you most people hold very sacred. Yes. So, you know, any kind of foolishness of like a uh, sovereignty like a, well, a horizontal interference is not okay and you know what they're giving me you have everything you need yeah they're giving me you, you know how particularly with just with the akashic records there's this thing of oh only certain people can get into the akashic records kind of not anything else the akashic records kind of a, that's kind of a thing right uh-huh. and the only reason that got started is what i'm getting is to your point the sacred information that's in there of the individual. But the point is, is everybody has the records within them to access. There's not any. Your own. Group. Yes. Your own or yours. Right. Yes. yes. So but I'm getting that we have the universal in us as well to access. Right. Mm-hmm. And I think, I think that, um, yes, there is actually, that's correct. But that, again, that's another, every, when you access universal, you go in yourself up and access it's when we start to try to go interface straight into another person. That's where oh, we yeah. always make our mistake. We always need to go inside, up, and access even the other yeah. person, right? Yeah. Even the other person. If we want to do energetic exchange of any kind, it's never, it's never um, like this. It's always energetic. Go in, up, and meet so, where you're unified already. Right. right. So what you just said is really interesting because with the work I do, think about. It. I'm always connecting with another person day to day into their, into their information. And I provide info. But when I, when I think about what you just said, I literally actually always like go up. I mean, I don't, I never do this one-to-one. How do I want to say this? I don't know how I'm going to describe this right, but I don't do what you just said, which is connecting into them. It's, it's, I go to universal, like, uh, access. It sounds yeah. It, it, yeah. so. And yeah. you, you're, you're natural. You probably did that naturally because of your, you know, be having a that healer background. You just did it, right? But there's oh. so many of us that don't do that. We oh. there's a lot of, especially like even when you're viewing somebody on a video, we tend to like connect. So even 
just to like, that's just something that I do. And I'm sure you probably do the same thing too. It's not a rejection. It's a, it's a allowing them to re-divert themselves where they need to go. So the facility, the energetic handshake of the connection for the information healing or anything else that's going on is actually done in the right spot. Mm -hmm. So that we just, it's not, it's not necessarily a connect horizontal to each other on this, on this human plane. Right. We go through and connect right through right exactly. at the top. Right. Exactly. And that's so interesting you brought that up because when I think about how I do my work, that is exactly it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Very so, much. Uh, there, you know, there's like guardianship. Some of this, it's so funny to hear it. It's just things that we've made up in our mind about, yeah. but we do tend to subvert our authority sometimes when we hear, oh, there's a person, there's a gatekeeper there that only allows for, you know, I'm like, okay, maybe that's just a reminder for us to be diligent about how right. we allow to access our energy and how, and we always do the higher connection. But in truth, nobody can keep any of that from you. It's all no. yours. But I'm saying it's it's not. Uh, exactly. it's, I'm so glad you brought this up because this is something I, I think this is important because when I work with individuals one on one, I don't know if I've talked about it much. I've talked about it maybe a few times in videos where we all have the ability <coughs> to access this information. Yes. We all have that. Mm -hmm. and, and, and yet it's 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 a practiced effort to do this in whatever way we want to use our intuitive gifts because. We're not, we are not taught that in humankind. That's a whole other thing, right. getting to that point to access it. You have to practice. We've all had to practice. It just didn't just, I mean, some of us, yes, it happened faster for us. And all of a sudden, but we followed the thread of the thing and we kept doing it. That's right. And you know, the thing, and that, that's the thing. Some people are just more, um, have more capability or practice or hone their skills right. at getting and seeing it. And that, that's, that's wonderful. You know, that's how we help each other out here. Um, I think well, what, where we lose our, we lose it a little bit. We lose our way a little bit is thinking that that's not actually, there's something about them that allows them that you don't actually have yourself. Yes. Right. That's very so, human. I mean, it's very, think about that. That's the ego. I mean, yes. it's, exactly saying, Oh no, no, you're just, no, you can't do that. So here I am kind of teetering on both. You have access, it's yours. You know, and then on the other, I'm like, don't just let any Tom, Dick or Harry in there to look around either. Well, so but to your point, uh, that to that point, to that latter point, that's the discernment we use when we choose to get involved in certain activities. Who are we going to work with? Who do we resonate with? Uh, if so, we don't just let anybody do uh, work on us, kind of thing, it, you know what I'm saying? We don't just open <laughs> ourselves up to anyone. So right. it is discernment is the word I, I yeah. keep hearing. And you, you know, just having that boundary even with anybody, even healers. You know, healers sometimes will kind of. You, uh, you know, if, if you hold yourself in the understanding that if something approaches you this way, you're going to say, no, no, I'm going to meet you up here. And you just gently yes. turn and re-divert them back inside themselves. I'm going to meet you up here that way. Yes. So it's like, oh, that, that's not this way. Go that way. Right. So I do that with, I do that whenever I'm doing any kind of healing or anything. I do that with other people doing healings with me. Now I had to learn that a little bit, yeah. kind of uh, the hard way, but um, I, that's what I do. And it's, it's just something that I have running in my field well, is just facilitate them, show them how to do it so they can yes. do it for themselves. And right? I, yes. Yeah. And I think too, during this, this awakening ascension journey that we're on, we start realizing we are energy beings, we are yes. energy bodies, we are, we're energy. And then we start becoming more discerning all the way around, not just this mm -hmm. idea of you know, who do I let into my energy field to do work on me or whatever, but also think about it. It's who we want, who we spend time with. We start getting energy, you know, we get, get this, this shift in frequency and we don't hang out with who we used to hang out with or where there's more space in between our togetherness, or we don't want to be around as me. It's all energy. So if we start really kind of looking at this journey energetically, we can answer a lot of questions for ourselves in what happens day to day. That is so perfect what you just it, said. Yes, if you start, you need to start looking at it and enter it. Not you don't have to go completely no. if you don't want to, but you have to start at least including it because it yeah. is so much, so much of what is going on around us is energetic. It is. It, it, would, be, it would be a shame not to include it. Well, you know, and, it, and and think yeah. about this. 
we can look at our day to day. It's like the overgiving, the over, the not having the balance in your journey. You know, you're giving too much of your energy away. So the guess what? You get depleted and you get sick and you get. So if we can really start thinking about like, oh yeah, I'm a human being living a human, but think about it in terms of energy and you're going to see it because we, at the end of the day, we need to have a balanced energy yes. state, but constantly mm-hmm. to, to the point you made about letting people in your energy. Well, it's all about that every single day. What do we choose to do with the energy we have? And honestly, what do we have to do with, or what do we do with the energy we have for that particular day? Because as we know, we wake up in the morning and like, I don't know about you, but the last few days, I've ne- never been so tired. I'm just exhausted. And so what we've got to be able to do, and we don't do this as humans very well, because we do this thing of, I got to go to work and do the thing. And I got to, and we have families and we have, you know, all the human stuff. So we pound through instead, wouldn't it be beautiful to wake up in the morning and go, okay, I only have so much energy for this. So yeah. I will apply this energy. Now there are things we can do within our human journey to be discerning. But mm-hmm. I think the first part is being aware we're an energy, being an energy yeah. body. And then saying, even though we have all the human stuff going on, wait a minute, how can I, how can I uh, uh, better utilize the energy that I do have for that particular day, knowing I'm an energy being. Agreed, agreed. And, you know, it's funny too, the way that we, like I was saying earlier, the way that we're connecting, you think about your, we are pure energy, right? Totally. Uh, We're pure energy energizing a physical vessel. Okay. So at some point there is no getting tired. Okay. At some point our being is pure energy being, there is no tiredness. So we have pure energy, um, but when we get in this body, we forget. Yeah. So we allow a lot of connections to come here. And so they're now getting their energy through your body to theirs instead of the direct connection to your higher with their higher. Okay. That's the clean, point. clear, perfectly. No, no problem with energy there. Right. That's a good point. So you're utilizing a certain amount of energy to run your body. So there, you're not ever, you don't have to ever reject a connection. It just don't take it straight into the body. Don't let right. the body take it. That's a good point. Always push up. Now you're never going to feel an energy drain if they're not connecting directly into your human body, directly into your, you just push the redirection, go back into yourself. I will meet you higher. Right. And then we can connect energetically even there but don't you know this is yeah i think we don't we don't realize it's like it's you only have like what we talk about sometimes we go and recharge our battery and then we go right so you go in in your charged battery don't let another battery connect to your battery yeah, <laughs> yeah it, exactly connect back to the charging base up there and we can still communicate right so yes um, oh just you know what happen. they just did they just brought yeshua jesus into my awareness okay Okay. So let me see if I can articulate this because you know he comes in for me as a metaphor or a example. Yes. Um, okay, they just well we know he's a master, but they said he was a master at this at what you just said it, because he was all around all energy types, but yeah. he was a master at whoa. There's a ton of energy around this staying in his own. Uh, how do I want to? No. Okay, here's what they're showing. Oh, God, I have chills. That's exactly what you said. He would access straight up. He would access straight up to when he would know he was going into a crowd, he would access. Okay. He had it within him, but he would access this divine, the divine energy that would flow into him that would not only be protective. They're talking about, oh, he would add like, like uh, uh, additional layers, more energy. Like he would, he would be able to, um, uh, uh, manage it based on the population he was around and who he was serving at the time is what they're saying. So as an example, hundreds of people or dozens of people different than one person. So he would know, he would know to, they just said retrieve. Oh, what is his right? Okay. What is his right to pull in? I have so many chills on this to then be able to go into a crowd and, and shift and change the energy of the crowd also to do the healing and then he would come back. They just said to stasis. So it's kind of like oh, he, would, uh-huh. he knew he knew how to uh, 
kind of, I'm just going to program his own energy pulling in when he needed it. Does that resonate with you? Because that's yeah, not where really. I was going on this. I was going to give you something else. And then he popped in. That's um, brilliant. Yeah, that's brilliant. So which is is right. I like that he said that. That's that's cool. Um, Isn't that is. interesting? Because oh. so he, it was more of an emanation. Yeah. It was more of an emanation of what and not necessarily a attaching to him to get. He was emanating it. Right. And, and he was bringing it in to emanate through him, but not as a, yeah, no, that makes total sense. Wow. Mm, yes. So interesting. You know, and the other part Ooh. of this energy situation that we're talking about too, you know, we're talking about other people. Well, mm. the thing is, and this is what I find for myself is, oh my gosh, I used to say, when we're talking about energy differences and what impacts us, the part I, that is, uh, le- I don't, I don't want to say less control, but like probably not control at all. For me are the planetary shifts and changes, the solar stuff, all this, uh, the astrological parts, the full moons, new moons, those are the energies that, okay, so hold on a second. Cause I'm getting some, I think I'm getting my answer. So let's see what you think. So they're saying, yeah, yeah, yeah that's different. Okay. That's the, the, like sun, moon, stars, planets. What they're talking about there, they said that's pure energy. That's the energy you need for ascension, for your journey, for the energetic being that you are, is also why your body can get hammered by a lot of those shifts and changes in our planet, our astrological stuff going on and why we have things happen. But they're talking about that's like part of, they're talking more the purity of it. Whereas when we're dealing with people, right, Mm -hmm. in our energy and their fields, that's where the discernment comes in, if that makes sense. So, so, so I'm going to keep going here real quick. So the discernment comes in so that the things you're talking about don't happen and we don't get impacted back to Jesus and the example of them going into the divine light to pull that in, to be able to deal with anybody we, we need to, or want to, and be in that environment and be able to use it for the greater good and emanate it out. Does that resonate? Absolutely does. Yes, it does. Yeah, it's really interesting, the management of energy and really looking at your body, like you said, becoming more aware of your energetic being and partic- you know, participating and interacting with other people as not only a human body, but an energetic being. And the management of that energy and all of the ways to, to have it be the most effective and power-packed as it can be, right? Um, I think it's, it's an incredible discovery when we far, first start to get there, right? When we first I start totally to agree. That. Yes. Um, and it also, I think, helps with the allowance for like what they were saying, letting in the different energies that they need to manage the group. You can, you can imagine that if you just start bringing in what I need, think of how that will shift this environment for you. And it will also help you start to remember or realize everything that you can do with your energy. Right. 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 Remembering some of the stuff like that came in and I did this thing and, you know, your consciousness will shift slightly or your creations will shift slightly. You'll start to remember, Hey, I know how to do this. Right. I really can like create with my energy I'm doing, you know, so I think that, that, you know, you, you really hit the nail on the head with that. I think with the, be, see yourself as an energetic being that is animating a body, right? Yes. Not, yes. you're not your body. You're the energetic being that is animating, you know, you know, so it's, uh, it's kind of a, a change of paradigm. I think for a lot of people, it'd be a real change, but it will really allow for the expansiveness yeah. to so- come in. I want to add something else because I'm not, I don't have this fully formed, but and maybe we can talk about it and we will understand it. They're talking about, as you're talking, because you know how that works, I get more information as you talk. Yes. Uh-huh. They're talking about, they're showing this conversation with the energy as you put your, and they're going to they keep using Jesus. They're showing him like the light around him with his, what he's created for that circumstance he's then in with an individual or a larger populace. Mm-hmm. They're giving indication that that then leads to when you set yourself up energetically and see yourself as that energetic being and that you can pull on the energy that you need for that point in time, 
This also, how do I want to explain this? Opens up the knowledge, the records, we just talked about the Kashic records to flow more purely to you to open up because it's in you. Right. But if you're, if you're in a, let's just use a energetic state, that's not conducive to who you are and you've allowed that to just happen and you don't manage your energy body, accessing that knowledge on a regular basis. Okay. They just said it's going to be in fits and starts and may, which is why we have to practice. Right. But it doesn't Mm -hmm. come just by that. Well, and no, no wonder they talk about self-care all the time. Right. Yes. So yes. it's, and that's with the energy body, the soul and the mind and the whole yes. physical body. So they're, yes. they're showing this flow of the information that just showed the tree, your tree, you just, that we just took into ourselves as we were born. Oh, they just said, so I'm going to keep going. They just said, yeah, the, well, that's when it blossoms a tree, like, oh, and I have chills. So like the blossoming of a tree in spring, when it starts coming out. And so when you've got your energetic body set up you're doing that part of that work and you're you're discerning and all those things you're now the knowledge starts to flow in a way and that makes sense because think about your chakras right your chakras your energy flowing right well it's real hard to make a pendulum move or any other kind of uh, housing rods when you are you're blocked in your energetic system they won't do anything right i mean they'll uh, typically so this is all tied together and I could probably go oh, on, yeah. on, but you, does that make sense? What I'm saying? Yes. Well, what you're, it's so interesting. Cause it's like the, um, all this stuff is housed within us. And sometimes we feel blocked or whatever, or, you know, sometimes I'm like, I don't know. I feel just like, I don't know. I don't feel like I'm connected, but I think it's frequency. So I think free, if the frequency is the key, like sometimes I see like channels running through us, like little slices yeah. And little frequencies running and you can access frequencies, but your frequency, you have to tune to it. And some frequencies is, are accessible based on your vibrationary rate, right? So if you're yes. not vibrating very fast, like you're way down in some of the dumpy, crappy energy or emotions, you're vibrating really slow. So if your vibration's up, it gives you more access to different to be able to tune yourself better. So I think that that's really the key. It's all there. Yes. It's just managing your vibrational rate, your frequency. Absolutely. So it's easy to see, right? Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. (laughs) And, and when we're attuned to, you know, how some people are just, especially athletes. Okay. Although I think they have to come out of the situation of like beating the horse to death kind of thing, meaning the body's the horse. (laughs) Right. Yes, but yes. athletes, when you're, when you're attuned to your body and you notice mm-hmm. the subtle change and differences, well, that's all energy, right? So yes. we want to become like that, um, that, um, super athlete, right. Of our energy yes. body and our energy system and be able to read ourselves and know what doesn't work and what does work and things shift and change as We become awakened and, and moving through this, these Ascension times because we, we become much more sensitive and much more aware, and we can't do a lot of the things we used to do. And so we, it, it's critical that we become really honestly a master of our own energy body. Yes. Yes. You know, and like you're saying with athletes, it's a great example, but you can put, you can put it into anything, singing, uh, art, 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 you know, what being more artistic. Well, like when you say I was really on my game today, like yes. I couldn't do, I was like laser precise, well, this is interesting too. Okay. So you've got different l- frequencies of different kind of versions maybe of you, but they're all coming from your Akash. So there's something called mining your Akash, meaning like um, there's so much of your history and everything in your Akash. So for instance, you can pull forward things like, you know, um, the, health health and vitality we find that in the akash and let's bring it forward now that or you know i want my voice to be better i want to have whatever you can go anything you want you know i want to be more coordinated i want to whatever god i there's so many things i'm, okay. I'm drawing a drink right I gotta now add this i gotta add this this might seem mm-hmm. obvious but so you what you just said is pulling that desire and that frequency and that information in however <laughs> what you add to it is the human experience we have a body. Well, guess what? Yes. You're not going to be a singer, uh, master, uh, a perfect singer. Um, let's say you're not singing at all, right? You're not going to be the perfect singer. You're going to have the desire and the thought. And you're again, this, this, oh God, this ties to manifestation too. So you're pulling that in, but then guess what? As a human, you have to practice. 
you have to do the human sure. part. You have yeah. to shift and change and do those, but you've brought in what you just said mm-hmm. through the records yes. and the ability. Now, think to- about, okay, we have all these records. We've brought in all of this information of all of our lineage. We've got everything that, every, you know, we have and all of our ancestors. And, you know, and frankly, when you start looking at records like this, there is no d- differentiation between me and my mom and my grandmother. No. We're the same, right? So you bring it through and you have all of this stuff, right? That in other expressions they have honed as well. Well, that comes through just like trauma and some of the other things that we heal for that line. Not only does that come through, but all of the gifts, talents, abilities, all of the, um, you know, uh, wisdom, the everything that they've done, they've home skills, like, like I was saying, anything, any kind of talent or gift, you are capable of pulling you, you can pull trauma forward to clear. We do it all the time. It comes up for us all the time. If you can pull trauma forward to clear, you can pull any wonderful thing that you would like to experience forward too. Yeah. And you know what they said, just said to me that we, it's a human thing that we have created where, oh, some people can do that. And I can't, I can't do that. I can, yes, you can. You actually can. And, and, and if you would choose to do that, pull that energy in, and there's, we still, we have to bring that in, into the human body. And, but, but my point being is I have been told that, no, you can be that singer. You can be that. You, you don't have to do repetition to learn. It's all there. You just have to express it, bring it in. And, and as a human, we do have to refine that though. Because right. of what we've done to ourselves, because we've we've been taught we can't do certain things and only certain people can do this. That's the part you're coming through. You're coming yeah. through that. Yeah, and it's 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 really a limiting the instrument, limiting yourself by the limitations that you feel the instrument has. Right. Well, you don't have to worry about that. You're the energy being. The instrument is not yours. Right. You're expressing through it now, but it's not who you are. Right. It's just yeah. your vehicle for this experience. And you know, the more so, and more, I, I love this conversation. The more I'm getting, the more I'm realizing, the, the, or the more you're trying, the more I'm realizing and, and feeling this is that, oh, they just said unlimited. We were meant to be these unlimited beings that it didn't matter what you wanted to do, you could do it. Uh, and we've gotten to, you know, we're coming out of it, but we've, <laughs> we've really gone pretty low to the point yeah. where we, we don't, believe we have any power or control and there's a lot of we could talk about our belief systems constructs yeah. institutions all that that's all created yeah, that right doing and that, right and we bought yeah, into it that. on and on so do it i mean that's the funny thing is sometimes um you know and i do, do this all the time i need to find somebody who can help me do this thing you know and so i used to do that all the time i did it i did it for many things when i was first waking up Mm-hmm. Now you're a different story on that. I have to say, you know, you're the exception to that because the stuff that I was dealing with, I needed somebody else to help me that you were able to do that for me. But on, in, in the plane of like, I would like to do something about, you know, I'd like to learn more about my, whatever I'd like to, um, you don't necessarily have to wait until somebody else can tell you, you can kind of create a process for yourself yes. and say, this is how I would like for that to kind of go down. And we can begin now. I might right. seek out mentoring and things like that too, but I'm going to like, let's just go ahead and get going and let's create your own process. You're, and you know, this is what they're talking about. Yes. You bring up a really good point. I'm going to interject real quickly. What they're talking mm-hmm. about is it's different when you have somebody f- helping you facilitate your own process, right? Yes. And not making, yes. becoming dependent upon them and facilitating yep. into awareness that guess what? You can do this too. You can tap into your own understanding and awareness during this journey. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And and some people, we may need somebody to catalyze us. Do you know what I mean? Like into that awareness or, or help us open up new doors, but not to be the end all and be all. And then now they're showing me (laughs) like cult leaders, right? Like kind of thing. You know, a cult leader is a, someone who you follow endlessly and you believe everything they say and do it and you're, you're, yeah. you're dependent upon them. Uh, is it, this all ties together. This all ties together. Everything we've just yeah. talked about. <laughs> everything ties together. Is so you know bad. what, you know what? Okay. So what they're talking about is people that do like work like I, I do as an example, they're, yes. we're here to 
help people open up their own doors, right? Or to get greater awareness, to not to become the, oh, you got to keep seeing me because you can't do this yourself. You know, not that no. at all. I that's think the way we and that's why they're bringing up a cult leader because cult leaders do that, right? Like, ooh, yes, you know, and I'm then everybody kidding. kind of projects all their power onto the cult leader instead of maintaining yes. it. Where you know, like some of the things, like when you and I get together, you get together in a group of people that are kind of energetically inspired beings. Oh. You do feel an enhancement of a co-creative space. Yes. So there is something to be said about that, but it is not a handover of all your authority power. I can't do anything, do everything for me, nope. but when you, you can get into it, that's what I enjoy most about being in yes. a yes. conversation or a group conversation is you can feel the collective, the group collective co-creational energy yes. explode. Yes. It's and they're, yes. They're talking about a balanced energetic exchange, whereas like with I keep going back to the cult leader. What they're saying is ultimately, because think about energy, it's all energy. Ultimately, if you have a group of people that are projecting all their energy out onto that one person, that creates a stronger later cult leader, right? Yes, yes. All that, all that energy those people would typically have for themselves to build them own, their own self stuff, they're projecting out into them. And as we know, that's just going to enhance things. Oh, I mean, a cult it's, leader it's unhealthy on both sides. Totally. Yes. I mean, totally unhealthy on both sides of that equation. Right. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Oh, it's so interesting. It's all energetics. Mm -hmm. And then where are you going to place your energy? Who are you yep. going to give your energy to? Who you who? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, I think about that sometimes. And we, you know, we were talking about Jesus earlier. And you think about everything that he came here or his message. And his message was not about, you know, follow, you know, follow no. me, attach to me, but, you know, as far, you know, as far as I know, no. he never really did anything like that. It was more of, let me show you what you're capable of. That's what but I've look been told. At the That's eon, what, yes. I've been told that. Long. Yeah. I mean, I, and there's still the propensity for a large group of people that follow Christianity or, or, you know, some of his teachings that still try to do that to him. Yes. Yeah. still are trying to do that too. So I don't, I'm thinking that he's probably doing the redirect, 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 you know, go back in you, go back right. in you constantly well, too. And again, we kind of go back to this, this idea, because my understanding of what I've been told is he was teaching us how we can be like him. Like here's yes. the right. method to follow. Yes. He was here to teach us that mm -hmm. We can be like him. And instead what happened, we know how that got all. Yeah. It's, it's really, you are, you are like me, right? Is what he was exactly. trying to say. You are exactly yeah. like me. You're exactly like anyone uh, can do this. Yes. Yes. So, um, but you know, what's really interesting about this now that we're on this subject um, with all the kind of stuff that I do, I go into all types of different galactic cosmic environments where there's stuff going on, you know, there's different agencies and different, whatever, you know, how I am all over the place. Mm -hmm. I'm talking and I have realized, you know, the, 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 when we think of Jesus or Yeshua, we always put him into the role that we know him here as, right? But his being is massive, expansive, and he's all over the place. He's galactic, cosmic. He's doing technical stuff. He's doing all his being. It's like we really isolate his um, person or his person. How do I want to say this? His multidimensionality. Yes. We only see him as one little part of his whole multidimensional being. So we really pigeonhole him into kind of that when we think of him instead of realizing he's a huge multidimensional being doing all kinds of stuff all over the place. Which basically too. we do that's what we do to ourselves. Yeah. That's what we do to ourselves too. Mm -hmm. We put ourselves, oh, this is us. When in reality, we're this expansive energy yeah. being that has so much potential and we were we were brought here to be able to experience some of that yes. potential yeah it's really amazing too so as you realize you know you run like energetically speaking when you start getting sensitive to energies or when i started getting more sensitive to energies i would recognize me like mm -hmm. my really like true hardcore signature of jennifer and when other beings would come in, I'm like, whoa, okay, they feel different. They're from somewhere else. They have a different frequency they're bringing, but I know that's me. Right. I know that's me, right? Right. So, oh my God, that's me. Well, you know, I definitely know you. Where, you know, who are you? And I introduce myself, right? 
Um, well, with his energy, this is funny too, because I would be doing something that was like maybe super technically based, or a lot of times I'm working on things like, uh, like the grids, you know, different grids and different, um, uh, infrastructure, like, uh, multidimensional infrastructure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so there, it's like more what you would think of as technical. Mm -hmm. Um, so like programmers, uh, code writers, um, some of these things as creator beings, like set up these big systems for us to be able to maneuver in this thing. And um, I was very familiar with his frequency from just like when I first started getting in touch with frequencies, I identified, he identified himself to me and I recognized his energy. Then I'm doing all the super technical stuff and I get, get, I get, a, get a little whoosh of energy from the one I'm working with. I'm like, hold on, you feel like, you feel like Yeshua. And he's like, yes, that's my energy. So I was like bumping into him in all these different oh, like, oh, places, not realizing, you know, and then I, I'm like, that really feels like, like yeah, you know, yeah. like because you do more than one thing. I can't walk and chew gum at the same time, Jennifer. You know, <laughs> like, you know anything you can just com- communication is unlimited with anything that has consciousness, basically. Yeah. Yes. So, but yes, it's really like, really like putting yourself kind of where you belong, which is on mm-hmm. your multidimensional totality of the multidimensional being that you are so you're on the same playing field with everything that exists it's not having to go to this layer over here or you know tap into that over there you actually are a part of the whole thing okay there you go i hope you have enjoyed the conversation today as i always say these are conversations that we have together we interrupt each other regularly we just kind of talk in some cases i don't know whether it's going to be a video or not and those are kind of the best kinds of of videos to have. I think you're just supernatural, right? Supernatural, right? Anyway, um, hopefully you've taken something away for your own journey. Like I always say, if you take a couple things away, that's fantastic. If the rest doesn't resonate, then toss it aside. This is all about building the story of your journey and learning from various people, places, and things. I hope you have enjoyed this. Thank you so much for joining me today. And check out purplerainhealing.com for all of my services. I would love to work with you on your personal journey, helping you understand past, present, future, and opportunities that are in front of you, as well as things that you want to work on. Thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you in the next video.